Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video we are going to do some very simple ink blending. I chose to make these cards into a gift set, but you could definitely just make one and call it good. Here I am showing you some templates that I made. I used my Cricut to make these. These are stencils that I have cut a circle out of. There is some etched lines to show you where to line up your A2 size card panel. Um, they are incredibly difficult to see. Even with the bare eye, they're very hard to see. Um, but I can see them in real life. <laughs> they are not visible on your video. I have one that the circle is centered on the card front panel, and then I have one where it's kind of top center. Um, and I just used my Cricut to make those. There are several companies out there that have uh, masking stencils, and you are more than welcome to use one of those. I have a Cricut mat that I cut down, and I'm going to use that to hold my paper and my stencils in place. And um, I just I, I could have just used my glass board, but I wanted to use this Cricut mat. Um, we're going to do some ink blending. So I have um, my ink blending tools. Uh, we're going to do some heat embossing with uh, Versafine ink and clear embossing powder. I am using these uh, sentiments from this particular stamp set uh, from Pink Fresh. Uh, this is the Friendship Blooms. Oh shoot, I'll find it. Um, we're going to use that. And then we're also using Funky Flowers from Inka Dinka Doo. I purchased that from Hobby Lobby, I do believe. Um, that stamp set is called In My Heart from Pink Fresh Studio. I, like I said, I'm going to make a gift set of these. And so I wrote down um, six different color palettes, I guess you could say, that I wanted to use. And I pulled the inspiration for these color choices from Christina's Oxide Combos. Um, she has several videos where she uses her Distress Oxide inks, and she actually created a hashtag for those. And that is where I pulled my inspiration. So this first set is... Let me find it. Hold on. Is Tattered Rose, Abandoned Coral, and Seedless Preserves. And I am using my Distress Oxide ink blending brushes. I have ones that are for oxides, and then I have ones for regular inks, regular dye inks. Um, I do try to keep those separate, and so these are the ones designated strictly for my oxides. And I'm using the tattered rose and going about a third of the way down and then I'm going to use that excuse me abandoned coral go cover the middle third that seedless preserves will cover the bottom third while ink blending these I am trying to get a very seamless blend at the same time in order to get a seamless blend you really have to overlap these colors quite a bit uh, that overlapping is really what gives you that blend that looks like you have used patterned paper or um, even like a brayer tool sometimes can give you uh, looks like this. So I put down that tattered rose, then I came in with the abandoned coral, and then I went back to that tattered rose blending brush. Um, most of the time I don't add more ink to that. Um, but sometimes I might need to. And so, um, and I go back over where those two colors meet, where the tattered rose and abandoned coral meet. And I'm going to do the same thing with this seedless preserves into that abandoned coral, making sure that I overlap quite a bit. And then I'll go back with that abandoned coral ink blending brush. Here I did decide to add some more ink, uh, just because that seedless preserves is a very, very strong color. It has a tendency to... It has the potential to kind of overwhelm your other colors very quickly. And so I did add more uh, ink to that, but most of the time I don't. Most of the time I just use what ink is remaining on 
on the blush on the brush from before without reinking it. So I just go back and forth several times. And what I'm showing you in this in this one is the same process that I do for all of these combos. I go typically the lightest color at the top, the darkest or deepest color at the bottom, cover a third of each and go back and forth between the colors until I'm happy with the blend. Um, another secret to this is to make sure you have a very juicy ink pad. Uh, if you need to re-ink it, it has a tendency to take you much longer and your blend um, is usually not as pristine. So in order to get my cardstock off of this sticky mat, all I do is bend the sticky mat away. Like I said, this is a, an old Cricut mat that I have and I have just cut it down to, I think like eight and three quarters or nine by like 11 and a half or something like that. So this in ink blending combo is, let's see, it is black soot, evergreen bow and old paper. So I tried to pick some colors that I don't usually use very often, um, just so I can kind of get more use out of the inks that I have. This one is Dusty Concord, Faded Jeans, and Cracked Pistachio. Again, I try to put like the lightest color at the top, the darkest at the bottom. Uh, this one is Chips Sapphire, Forest Moss, and, Forest Moss, and Crushed Olive. Um, that one is really pretty. I like that one. This one is Kitsch Flamingo, Carved Pumpkin, and Squeeze Lemonade. That one reminds me of like summertime. <laughs> that one's fun. And then the final one is Salvage Patina, Peacock Feathers, and Villainous Potion. And again, I pulled all of these colors uh, off of Christina Werner's website, uh, Christina's Oxide Combos, hashtag Christina's Oxide Combos. Because I am going to do some ink blending on these, or excuse me, some embossing, I did heat set every single one of these panels until they were nice and dry. Uh, so we are going to go ahead and jump into the embossing. So I have my anti-static powder tool. I'm using that dry brush to brush it all around the area that I'm going to be embossing on. I'm going to stamp this Funky Florals uh, stamp from Inga Dinka Doo in my VersaFine ink. Uh, because I have never used this stamp before, I am just quote unquote prepping it <laughs> with my hand, just rubbing my hand over it to get some of that manufacturing residue off. And then I will stamp it down. I thought I was going to have to stamp these down multiple times, but this stamped beautifully the first time, every time, which is a Christmas miracle. Let's, let's be honest. Uh, that very, <laughs> very rarely happens. I'm using my little pressure tool from Stampin' Bug off of Etsy just to apply some even pressure so that I can, uh, get a good image all the way across. Like I said, this stamped beautifully the first time. And then what I'm going to do is stamp some clear embossing powder or stamp some clear embossing powder. I'm going to emboss with clear embossing powder. This is from Ranger um, over the top of this. If you had not heat set that and your ink, your uh, Distress Oxide ink was still wet, that embossing powder is going to stick absolutely everywhere all over your ink blending. That's why I chose to heat set that before I went into the embossing. So I'm going to do this for every single one of those panels. Uh, that one was the one that was centered in the middle of the card. This is the one that's centered more toward the top center. And I just cleaned my stamp off, repositioned it where I wanted it, and we're going to stamp these. I'm going to pull my sentiments from that in, in my heart stamp set from uh, Pink Fresh Studio. That I have the stencils, the dies, and the stamp set for it. But in today's video, I'm just using the stamp, uh, the sentiments for it. Um, and that is what I'm going to use to stamp all of these sentiments on these cards. I am going to end up finishing these cards off with, um, or how I'm going to package them, I guess I should say, is I purchased some clear boxes from clearbags.com. And these hold A2 size cards and their envelopes. And so I will end up putting these in a box with coordinating envelopes and um, gifting them that way. I'm here. I'm just going to heat set all of these uh, embossed flowers 
Clear embossing powder is really easy to see when it is heat set. It goes from like a white grainy to a clear shiny, and it is really pretty. Uh, you could have used gold embossing powder. You could have used black embossing powder. You could have used glitter. Um, I chose to do it this way. I don't have black embossing powder anymore. I felt like it got absolutely everywhere. And so this is how I choose to emboss in black. Here I am just going to go through and pick a sentiment that I feel goes with the color scheme or is a sentiment that I wanted to use. I made this a mixed bag of sentiments. What I mean by that is I didn't put the same sentiment on every card. I chose a variety of sentiments um, because I wanted this to be a kind of a versatile gift set of cards. Um, and I felt like, you know, some of these more muted colors, darker colors were not necessarily, you know, hey, happy birthday um, or congrats. Um, and some of these brighter colors um, were not necessarily suited to, you know, you're in my heart, I'm thinking of you kind of thing. I adhered these to a colored card base that I felt coordinated. And then I used some Nouveau drops to finish these off. I used a variety of Nouveau drops in these videos to finish them off. This one is Emerald City, I think. I don't remember. I will link the ones that I used in the description box below for you. Um, but I just try to find something in my stash Nouveau drop. This is Emerald City. I tried to find something in my um, stash that I felt brought out one of the colors that I used to ink blend. Are they a perfect match? Absolutely not. Could you skip this step? Definitely. Uh, particularly if you were kind of in a rush uh, to get these packaged into a person. These have to dry. I left these to dry for a couple days before I got back to them. They definitely don't need quite that long to dry. Um, but they are, they're kind of, they're kind of tricky because they seem like they are dry to the touch. Um, but if you apply any kind of pressure to them, they almost cave in. So I let mine dry for about 24 hours, but they don't really need that much time. Well, I, that is the end. Uh, I thank you for watching. I appreciate your time and go me for having a video that was under 20 minutes. Um, I hope you enjoyed and felt inspired and we will see you next time.